so we're here at my latest studio. This cost a million pounds to make. No, not really. Like we're, uh, I've just moved house temporarily. So like I'm out of the, the birds, the bird studio in Bath for like a month or so while it's been decorated. And uh, yeah, I haven't had a different studio for like 15 years. I don't think it's kind of weird, but uh, you can see from all the boxes, like this is, all very essential to acoustic treatment here, you know? Like, this is like my homemade bass trap. <laughs> it's got a little bit of cookery books in there. When I, when I finally made a little bit of money from music, I invested in an air conditioner, which is probably the best studio investment I ever made, especially in this weather. But unfortunately here, there's no room to put an air conditioner. So I've, um, I've gone for the ghetto approach, magic call, air conditioning in a can. It's like four quid from Boots. That is like a high that you can't replace. So yeah, this track, Hold Up The Crown, my latest single, is uh, one of the tracks from the new album. And um, was probably like, I was speaking to Dom earlier, and he said it sounds like relatively simple compared to like some of the others. I'm like, no, it's, look, it's got like 193 tracks on here, it says. But, you know, um, this is probably the hardest, one of the hardest tracks to write from the album. Just, I don't know, some tracks take like a week and some tracks take, some, take months. It's basically, this one was just one of those ones that was drawn out. But um, it kind of, the sketch, the sketch was very similar to what you hear, but it was just a lot of polishing. Um, there's sort of like three major elements to this tune. One is the kind of bass line. Two is some horns on top of that and then a vocal. It's that sort of mixture between the bass, the horns and the vocals that kind of gives the track its vibe. I programmed the drums off an MPC actually, if I remember correctly. Yeah, as you can definitely tell it's like an MPC because it's got like a bit more of a bounce to it. I, I end up doing like much more sort of like uh, edits to the kick drum and the snare, just like little edits like that when I'm on the drum machine. So. little cool rolls. I love doing those on the MPC, like things like this, just at the end of like every four bars or eight bars. Yeah, so like I said, one of the, the key elements, this was from the original sketch I did, this was the, the kind of like horns in the background, um, which sounds a bit like this. I can't remember where they're from. I know I wouldn't tell you on camera anyway, but uh, yeah, like real cool sort of horn sample. The bass is cool. That 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 took me quite a while to do. I I did made that on Serum, I think, with lots of different layers. But like, when I find a bass that I like, I, I, that's another thing to remember about this track actually as well was um, when I was making this, I was working purely off my laptop. Like I thought it was a good idea to just purely work off my laptop. Like a few years ago, I was like. Oh, I have an iMac, but I have a, a MacBook Pro and they're both the same speed, so I can just work anywhere on a laptop. But like, I, I got so frustrated with working on a laptop and this track like destroyed that laptop, like the CPU, it just didn't like it. So like, a lot of the stuff I had to bounce down, so the bass is bounced down, but luckily I bought a, um, this is this track was the reason I bought one of these like Mac trash can things, there's so much power in them. <laughs> And then uh, I think I've got a sub underneath. Yeah. One one tr one thing I struggled with was the the first note of the sub wasn't as loud. It didn't have as much impact as the other notes, so I had to like separate them and put them on uh, different tracks here. This this Clarisonics. This is good. This is good if you if you need more sub out of your sub it adds a little bit more saturation to it. So if you listen to it, push up the sub level on here. So that's like a bit more like presence to, to the off. So now I've gone to the vocal session. So there's so much processing on these vocals, you can probably hear. Uh, 
This is the vocal clean without any kind of auto tune or effects on it. And then, and then, um, this is with the pitch scratch. We didn't actually use auto tune. We used the the Logic's built-in pitch pitch scratch, and which can work well. Hold on the crown, pies, girl, you know it feels right. You can hold on the crown, put it on how you like. Got it, give me the prize, girl, you know it feels that's with no processing, I mean, it's got loads of effects on. So the next thing was um, to add a tape delay on there. This is a good plugin for vocals, just adds like, um, it's like an almost all-in-one channel strip for vocals, this CLA vocal thing. Gives it some nice sheen. The difficult thing with this track is like the vocals go over the drop so it's not like there's a little bit of vocal and there's a drop there that's quite hard to do to 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 make a track drop with vocals on top and make it all have space so the limit was important for that to, to keep the uh, vocal right up on top of it and really present so that was a little insight into my uh, new single hold up the crown featuring Kai Lenz which is out now you can go and listen to it if you want to and also send me packs of magic cool keep me going while I'm in this studio for the next few weeks. Thank you very much.